Are you preparing for an exam but have no syllabus? Oh my god, that is like really crazy. But no worries, we're here to help you. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys for your support. Thanks for tuning in and we are happy to have you guys watching. Now in today's video, we're going to be looking at the biology CSEC syllabus. We're going to be going through the topics and the sections in the syllabus and how it is actually organized so you have an idea of what to expect or how to comprehend the syllabus. In regards to the overview of the content has three sections to it. You have section A, which is living organisms in the environment. You have section B, which is life processes and disease. And section C, which is continuity and variation. In these sections, you have different topics that you have to cover. And we're going to be looking at the topics that you need to cover in section A, B, and C. Now, in section A, you have several topics, uh, roughly seven topics. These topics include characteristics of living organisms. And you could summarize that as Mrs. Gren, which you would include movement and respiration and those processes that living organisms carry out. You have classification, which involves the five kingdoms and how you will classify organisms. You have ecology, which involves feeding relationship. It involves abiotic and biotic factors. You need to make sure you know about soil sampling techniques and how all of those things impact the ecosystem. You need to know about special relationships which would include feeding relationships where food chains and food webs are involved. You also need to know about symbiotic relationships and that includes mutualism, commensalism, parasitism, and you also need to know about competition and other special relationships. You also have nutrient cycling to cover. Nutrient cycling involves carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, the challenges in recycling overall and what are some benefits of recycling you also need to cover human impact on the environment which involves overfishing pollution effects on climate changes and all of those negative impacts on the environment the final topic in this section is population what we look at when we talk about population is the growth of the population, reasons for growth, and survival. That's the end of section A. So we have seven topics to cover in section A. In section B, life processes and disease, you have roughly 11 topics to cover. And I'll start with cells. Cells would include the structures, the organelles, the different types of cells, and also how things get across the cell. And those processes in particular would be osmosis and diffusion. After cells, you would need to look at nutrition. Nutrition would take into account both autotrophic and heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophic occurring in plants and some bacteria which would take um, the form of photosynthesis and chemosynthesis and you also need to look at animal nutrition which is digestion okay and you know the structure of the alimentary canal after nutrition we move on to respiration which would be both aerobic and anaerobic respiration and also we need to look at the structure of the respiratory system how does that um, relate to the function so we look at the alveoli we look at gaseous exchange surfaces in fish and humans and that would take into account the gills and lungs we also need to look at how substances or the gases then get across these gaseous exchange surfaces 
we look at transport which is the next topic after respiration so transport is both in plants and animals when we talk about transport in plants we speak specifically to the structure of the xylem and phloem we look at transpiration and we also look at root pressure capillary action adhesion cohesion when we talk about transport in humans we are looking at circulation and the structure of the heart we look at the blood vessels we look at blood we look at immunity we look at blood clotting and how the different components of blood contribute to those things so those are the things that we need to look at for humans and speak to the difference of um double circulatory system versus a single circulatory system after transport we move to excretion and osmoregulation excretion we have to know the structure of the kidney we have to know the nephron we need to know about adh its role in osmoregulation we need to look at the loop of henley the different things that are absorbed and all the processes that will take place there we look at ultrafiltration excretory surfaces which would include the lungs and the skin not just the kidneys but the lungs and the skin also play an important role after excretion we move on to movement and locomotion so movement we're gonna be looking at movement in plants movement in animals so we're look at we're looking at partial movement and whole body movement we look at the structure of bones we're going to be looking at the skeletal system and we also need to look at how different joints allow different kinds of movement so we look at partial movement bones and how muscles actually work as well so the biceps and the triceps how do they work after movement we look at irritability irritability speaks to your response to the environment and that's where we look at reflex actions the brain we look at the eye the pupil and all of those structures that come into effect with irritability and one responding to their environment we also look at drugs and how it impacts irritability after irritability then we move to growth when we talk about growth we're looking at seed structure we're looking at germination and growth curves we also look at how hormones influence the process of growth in plants after growth we move on to reproduction in both plants and animals in plants we look at pollination seed dispersal seed structure double fertilization in reproduction in man or humans we look at the structure of the reproductive um, system we look at contraceptive methods and men and the menstrual cycle after reproduction we move on to disease which concludes section b so in disease we're going to be looking at the types of diseases the categories that they fall under and after we categorize these disease we zone in on diabetes hypertension and we also look at vectors what's the difference between a pathogen and a vector and we look at uh, malaria and we also look at dengue and how these diseases are different and how it impacts a population in section c continuity and variation we're going to be looking at approximately six topics and these topics would include cell division that is mitosis and meiosis what's the difference between the two and the purpose of these cell divisions we, the next topic is variation so variation would take into account the two types which would be continuous and discontinuous variation and we're looking at how genetics and environment influence those kinds of variation we move on to inheritance inheritance now would be understanding the terms like heterozygous homozygous dominant recessive sex linked traits we talk and two common ones would be hemophilia and colorblindness 
we also talk about co-dominance which would be blood group we talk about inheritance of traits like albinism and sickle cell anemia also the ability to rule one's tongue we look at incomplete dominance as well after inheritance we look at speciation that is pretty much having an understanding of what a species is as well as how new species are formed after speciation we move on to natural selection that has to do with um, selection pressures in the environment how an organism evolves how does it survive so keeping the traits that make it suitable in the environment and some common examples that the syllabus speaks to would be caribbean lizards sea turtles and how the peppered moth actually engaged in natural selection based on the time that it was morphing after natural selection we talk about genetic engineering that includes the production of insulin we're looking at fighting deficiency conditions by implementing um, golden golden rice which protects against vitamin a deficiency so a lot of night blindness would be taking place so genetic engineering steps in now to produce something that will combat that deficiency which is the golden rice and we also look at the concept of genetic genetically modified organism which is a gmo so th those are the things that we explore in genetic engineering the pros and cons ethical considerations social implications and ecological implications so those are the topics in section c okay guys so basically we just explored the content that the syllabus wants us to cover right for biology csec examination so remember you have three sections with several topics under each section section a speaks about living organisms in the environment section b talks about life processes and disease and section c talks about continuity and variation this syllabus is expected to span over a two-year period so fourth and fifth formers and that's how you would complete all these topics in a two-year period and that concludes our video on the content overview of the syllabus thanks for watching guys you can comment like share and remember to subscribe